Uh, today, I'm very happy to have a young expert with us, and that too in the most difficult field, statistics. Wow. So right now we have with us Dr. Vani Lakshmi. Uh, let's listen to her. Over to you, doctor. Pleasure meeting you, sir. Thanks a lot for this opportunity. Uh, my name is Dr. Vani Lakshmi R. I was born as Vani Lakshmi R. And I think three decades later, the prefix doctor got added to my name and I'm here to tell you my story. Wonderful. I uh, come from a very small town in Ernakulam district in Kerala. I was born as the eldest daughter to my parents. I have a younger brother. And like any other uh, child born in mid-90s, we were confused people, I would say, because when I was in class five is perhaps when uh, Y2K happened. So I think I belong to a generation that has lived a part of our life like our parents. And we are living the second half of our life like a lot of kids that I know today. So fundamentally, at the moment, I would like to call myself a teacher professionally, but I would always call myself a learner. So I was passionate about learning. I loved all the subjects that was part of our school syllabus in late 80s and early 90s. So perhaps when I was in class eight uh, was when I got sweets from my school principal. And that's the very first time I heard about somebody who has done a PhD. And I was very enthused. She was also my biology teacher. So I was enthused about uh, what this PhD is all about because until then, what I thought was something like doctor, you know, having a DR will save you from being called Miss or Mrs. later. So that's all I knew. And the doctors I knew were medical doctors. Right. So I remember meeting her, thanking her for the sweets and asking her, uh, what did she do to get her prefix changed? And why is she not a medical doctor? And I think that is perhaps the very first time I thought I should, there is a roadmap for learning because uh, even now I think the phenomenon is still the same. There is a basic interest or inclination towards medical degree, towards engineering. So she was neither of those. She was a doctorate. And she told me you have to study well and you have to, more than studying and getting marks, I think you have to learn things right. And a couple of months later, she came back to our own class as our biology teacher. And that was my class eight. And I was, I was very clear that I like numbers, but then I also am a fan of English as a language, Hindi as a language, and Malayalam as a language because I am a Keralite. At the same time, my mother tongue is Tamil. So languages always <laughs> fascinate me. Mm. And by the time we reached our uh, class 10, we have this mad race for uh, entrance exam. But somewhere down the lane, I was very clear that I'm not going to write any entrance exam. I was in awe of my grandparents' journey because my grandmother has been a postgraduate in Sanskrit and uh, she was a faculty at Kendriya Vidyalaya for a short while. Wow. And my grandfather was a statistician in uh -huh. government service. Right. So as a kid, I thought statistics is all about census, getting data, collecting numbers. And from his colleagues, he was also a teacher. He used to teach students. So from his students, I heard a lot about him and I was enthused about what is that subject all about? And I wanted to learn something that is applied, meaning I wanted to see its application immediately. It's not just about theory. Knowing theory is one part of the journey. Application is a whole other domain that I wanted to have immediate access to. And statistics was the subject that uh, gave me or satiated me with that feeling. Because when you learn physics or when you learn chemistry, you are too young to think beyond what 
could be possible application B. Whereas when it comes to mathematics, I was I heard about bank exams. You know, you are you're seeing its application or accountancy skills. But then I felt statistics is my cup of tea, and I happily decided that I found a college where my grandfather had studied. <laughs> so <laughs> I was very choosy and picky that I will do my learning there. Okay. And the name of the college is Sacred Heart College Tevra. It's in Ernakulam district. And each time I cross the college, I would tell my mom, what should I do to get a seat here? What is that score that I should get yeah. to get a seat in the institution? Mm. And yes, by uh, luck and also by efforts, which involved support from my family and my teachers, especially, I got what I wanted. Okay. And the second reason for choosing my college was I wanted a scenario where there is mathematics, statistics, and computer science without physics and chemistry. Chemistry, I panicked <laughs> labs in particular. I was yeah. very worried and apprehensive about labs. Okay. And uh, physics, somewhere down the lane, there was a fear that what if I don't succeed or this is not my kind of a subject per se. So, so my college satisfied that need as well. And when I finished my school, I actually chose statistics thinking it will keep me free from no, it will keep me free from computers. Yeah. So that was the uh, mindset that I had, which was true until then, until uh, late 2000s. Uh, you you don't need a software or you are not trained to have expertise in a software when you're studying statistics. So I said bye bye to computer science and mathematics and focused fully on statistics. And I promised myself that I'm not going to do an IT job. So okay. uh, all of these things, I think, uh, were pretty unconventional, I would say. And my parents were my support system. They never conditioned me for anything. And they were, uh, they were and are open to whatever my learning expeditions are. I did face... Some small, small challenges could be my relatives or could be my uh, friend circle because I was the only person in this class who has chosen computer science mathematics stream and did not get into engineering college. Right. So it, I feel in a way it could have affected my friendships back in school. It could have uh, affected uh, the way people see me at then because I chose something different from the rest of my class. And the phenomenon was same in most of my friends whom I met in college. Yeah. So my college days were both entertaining as well as very, very fully filled with opportunities to learn. So I would call it edutainment. And I think more than marks, I love the journey. I love the learning process. And I feel once you love the learning process, marks or whatever accolades you are targeting, I think it would come to you naturally. I was part of some clubs, including speakers forum. My mom is a music teacher, so uh, I was part of music club. And so I could pursue my uh, hobbies. I write poems. So I used to have a blog. And I'm looking forward to be known as an author someday. Okay. So... Uh, I think my college life was very wholesome. Yeah. And we had a very, so I think the academia now, as now as a teacher, I'm seeing that academia now is a good support system and it's a student centric system now. It was not so, maybe perhaps when I just joined college. And after my UG, I was very clear that it is going to be statistics in my life. Yeah. And I also had, there was this a childhood dream which never took off. I am a very persistent civil service aspirant. Okay. I was. So, but I think that's a failed experiment in my life. So, the aspiration was to clear civil service exam with statistics as the subject because there are not many institutions that offer uh, statistics as an optional. There are no coaching centers. There are, there's hardly any material. Mm. Yeah. So, I wanted to do something challenging. So I wanted to clear civil service with statistics as an optional. That is the part of a story where uh, I could not succeed the way I expected to be. And 
when I joined for Masters in Loyola College Chennai, it's an autonomous institution affiliated to University of Madras. Uh, I was introduced to the idea of pursuing research as and when you study. Yeah. But at that point of time, there was uh, no idea of scopus indexed research or you know journals. We didn't have, we were not very clear of uh, publishing our work. So our teachers mentored us to, I think they mentored us to write thesis better than writing a manuscript. Yeah. But throughout my journey, I learned how to write a manuscript from my seniors and my faculty at Loyola College. And that is when I realized that PhD is just not about research. I learned about UGC, the admission process. So that was also the time when central universities were planning to have a common entrance exam. Yeah. So, but in the year that I joined, the universities were allowed to have their own uh, entrance. So I was, master's was a wholesome experience, I would say, meaning it was just statistics. Yeah. all through the course of yeah. uh, two years. I was the last batch of uh, UG graduates having a yearly system. So transitioning right. to semester was uh, initially a challenge, but I think uh, it went on well. And I decided that I will not leave the city of Chennai until I clear uh, a PhD entrance. Okay. So after uh, finishing my master's, I just stayed back in the campus so that I could utilize the library facilities. I could uh, be in a calm and composed place because I feel not, it's just not my feeling, but what I have learned from my life is anything that you get by merit will stick to you. So clearing an exam by merit was a challenge I took to myself. So this entrance exam route was a uh, a nice challenge because at that point of time there is no previous year question paper there is uh, no info that you have and that is the time when we were uh, we, I just saw the news that data science was the sexiest job of the century I think it came in the New York Times in 2012 so I was enthused about data science but I did not find any uh, options to pursue something after a master's in statistics yeah. And then I thought maybe that is something I'll pick it up on the way and maybe I will learn the differences. Maybe I'll learn the similarities. Uh -huh. So I joined Pondicherry Central University uh, through the uh, central government's the entrance exam, the central university's entrance exam. And I had a fulfilling four-year life in campus. So that was a transition from a private institution to a government institution. And it had its own perks. The first thing was access to experts. Yeah. So being in a university, each department felt like a college for me. Right. So the university was so huge. We had a really diverse crowd. So one morning I would be probably having uh, my breakfast with a PhD scholar from uh, hydrology or geology. Next day I would uh, interact with somebody from social work. So... All my interests in other subjects, I think I picked it up from my experience at Pondicherry University. And I would especially like to, I always remember my guide and I would like to uh, thank him at every moment I get to. Because uh, the way he shaped my research, the way he helped me learn things. And that I think is a rare opportunity for a lot of people because I've heard stories of my own friends, some of my seniors, some of my juniors having a very difficult experience in their doctoral journey. But when it personally, I felt that the, the support system that he provided is something that I will always remember. He just let me be as a person. He did not try to change me as an individual, but at the same time, he gave me a lot of things I learned from him not only in subject, not only in uh, his area of expertise, but also as an individual. And the biggest pillar behind this entire journey was I would dedicate it to both my grandmothers. Okay. Because coming from a, a pretty conservative system, wherein the moment you finish your UG, probably one half of your world would be worried about your personal life. But I had them on my right and my left telling me that 
see this is an opportunity that you are getting this door will not knock twice and you should go for it it was not easy to move step out of home after i finished my ug because i've spent nearly 20 years of my life as a day scholar so that transition was not very easy for me the only advantage being my mother tongue and the place it was tamil nadu all over be it my pg or uh, phd apart from language playing the role of a boom i felt that uh, they have been my warriors they have shielded me from all opportunities that will stop my learning opportunities for others but obstacles for me they were two big shields for me and i think they sort of made it easy for my parents also to step up and tell that yes this is what she wants to do and my dad did phd along with me so <laughs> he was a year senior to me and i think that's where i get my interest to learn from so while i was doing my school he was doing his second pg and uh, while i was doing my ug he was doing another pg and when i joined for phd he was a year senior to me in a different university and we had our uh, defense on the same month in the same year so he started off in the first working day of december i must december. say i have never heard of such a story <laughs> it is <laughs> incredible just incredible that your dad and you got your phd in the same month wow it must be it's quite an amazing story but anyway let's hear from you so uh, i still remember the time when i attended his defense i was there with him when he was defending his thesis and after we finished the defense i thought both of us thought we should head to a temple and we visited the temple and once we are coming back to our place of stay i get a call from my guide that your reports have come everything is fine we can fix your defense this month itself so come down to pondicherry so his defense was on the first working day of that month and mine was on the last working day and another point that i would always remember is it happened on national mathematics day uh, which is the uh, birth anniversary of shrinivas ramanujam yeah and i belong to the institution where i the department was called ramanujam school of mathematics mathematics yeah. and statistics so i felt a lot of uh, it felt something beyond something divine something just uh, beyond a regular phd there were a lot of such moments that touched my heart and just so that this journey becomes smooth i think i have rejected job opportunities i have rejected a lot of things in my personal life which i do not regret and one notable experience that i have is when uh, in a central university faculty have a uh, vacation whereas at that point of time scholars didn't have vacation i'm not sure about the change in the landscape if any but we never had vacation we could we had to take leave and then so or during one such time i uh, came across a national level competition which is funded by un women and i called up my guide and i asked him sir can i participate he said go ahead and the event was happening in chennai and i presented an analysis on uh, census 2011 and it won first prize at national level mm -hmm. and uh, and at that time also my dad was there right next to me he had come for his conference presentation so he was there witnessing me winning the award and i felt that was another moment that i could make him proud yeah so after phd i was in a dilemma the dilemma never ends actually because on one side i'm not getting through civil services so i'm continuously preparing and i'm missing it by by a very small margin that would you know put you to tears for the next two months and then your preparations bring come up again meanwhile my convocation happened and my convocation day was also result of prelims in 2017 so here i am picking my doctoral degree and my dad is checking his phone and realizing that i didn't clear the lips okay so i still remember being next to him i don't know i didn't know if i should be happy or if i should cry i was happy because i'm getting a closure and dr is getting added to my name but at the same time i also realized that i haven't cleared uh, prelims so the next two years i have uh, i did invest because i didn't want to give up on that and made 
finished all the eligibility related uh, minimal number of attempts that I could. And the last one got washed away in COVID. That was 2020. So that is one path where I think I have failed and that's a failure I'll always remember. Okay. Because I always saw myself as a civil servant who's a statistician okay. and who would uh, teach statistics for free. <laughs> so all right. that is how I used to tell myself. Then I realized that maybe I'm made, tailor-made to be a teacher because uh, my parents and my grandparents uh, were and are teachers. So when I had an opportunity to knock my door, I thought I should take it up. I remember helping my friends back in school and college, helping them for their exam, just before you get into the exam hall, telling them shortcuts and them thanking me and telling me that I'm a good teacher. So I thought maybe that is a skill that I have which I can explore. And when an opportunity knocked my door, a well-known private university and now an institution of eminence, I was more than happy to explore that possibility. And here I am five years into teaching data science, something that I wanted to do in 2012. I am happy with the learning experience, the teaching experience. And I'm in a place where I continue to learn or I'm getting opportunities to learn as I teach. So never give up on learning was a personal motto for me. And I feel my profession is becoming a good support system for the same. And to when I meet people who tell me that they are civil service aspirants, I tell them keep a plan B so that you will not be as shocked as I was. And sometimes maybe plan B would work better than plan A. And the skills that you get while preparing for your plan A will help you be a better person in plan B. Because preparing for general studies exam for more than 10 years, I think it gives me an opportunity to talk something beyond my subject. Okay. And it kept my you know, basics until graduate level in a lot of subjects. It kept me um, updated. And I was always in awe of social sciences. So when someone comes across when I get a this opportunity to collaborate with somebody from social sciences, I understand their problems faster and it's easier for me to go ahead with my consultancies. Okay. So I think my failures also have helped me, but I will remember it for a long time. All right. And uh, uh, as I stand today, I'm still a learner. I finished my MBA after my PhD. I'm an alumnus of BITS Pilani. Uh, I got another convocation last year. So wearing the black dress uh, continues to excite me. And I think I'm not going to give up on learning. Wow. Their the bits, Pilani, which campus? Uh, their work integrated learning program for uh, working professionals. Okay. I finished an MBA in quality management because that okay. sinks in with the requirements of a higher educational institution. Okay, wonderful. All right. Now you have promised me that you would give some advice to young people. So please do it. Uh, yes. I'm actually not good at advices, but uh, since I'm a teacher, I think it comes naturally to me. So more than telling you, telling anyone advices, uh, what I would say is you are going to fail. Okay, there is, that is for, for sure in one place or the other, failure will knock your door. Failure will be your guest, but see what you can learn from failure also, because you never know that will be your biggest strength. I have seen that in my students when they sit for placements, they might lose, they might continuously fail losing internship opportunity and I'll see them disappointed. But in the end, I will see them in a job that is beyond their dreams. So failures are going to happen. You have to just go along with it and see what you can learn from it. Sometimes you might get a new network, a new connection. Sometimes failures might get you a new skill. So failures always help. And always go for what interests you. There are going to be, advices will come across around you because we have no dearth of advices. But it's important for us to match those advices with our interests. For instance, if someone is telling you that... Uh, Yes, you should choose statistics, but if your love is in economics, 
go for economical statistics or statistical economics or mathematical economics and you know balance it out and one thing that i would always suggest is we are in a world where we narrow down things but i think a broader perspective is still required for us to help you know be better individuals more than better professionals or better employees because if you are a good individual i think you will automatically evolve to be a better employee better son better daughter better sibling and all the other roles you will have in your life okay anything else you want to add here okay have good hobbies that would is something that i would tell everybody i meet okay because uh covid 19 time has been very stressful for me as well i was in a place where i couldn't go home for almost one and a half years despite having i was earning i was a an employee i was working but still the logistical concerns the health concerns it stopped me from going home for over one and a half years and that is when i enrolled for mba okay. so i think uh, so have your own hobbies my hobby at that point of time a practical one was to learn so i look for opportunities and i found one so have your hobbies with you okay. always all right well thank you so much i think uh, are we done here or we have something more you want to add i don't have any question but if you have something to add please do so now uh i have seen actually a lot of big bits yeah and what i would like to even others to explore is each bit 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 is not just a story it is a snapshot of our life and we are a very diverse group people coming from different spheres we are here we so i have watched a couple of bit bits where i do not know who they are but i found some solutions to so i felt it's like bhagavad gita my grandmother used to tell if you have a problem open bhagavad gita you will find a solution it has helped me but listening to others journeys they may be friends or they may be strangers i feel it has always helped me and i'm sure anybody who is watching this video will find the same journey as well okay thank you so much uh, it's very uh, good to hear a story of a person who was supported by the family sometimes as you know we have heard stories where there was no family support and sometimes it's a different story altogether so thank you so much for such a Uh, honest and clear exposition, and your emphasis on failure, right? You know, most people like to hide their failures, but you have told it to us very openly, and you said, "Look, failure is going to happen," and I agree with that. This, and I agree with that you have to have plan B. Okay, in fact, you need to plan C also sometimes. So good. All right, let's end it here. Uh, maybe we'll catch up with you in a year to see how you are doing. and where you have taken yourself to the next step but let's say bye to the viewers now bye bye everybody thank you sir